In the mystical lands of Europe, there exists a family tree more intricate than a spy novel. Bankers, industrialists, politicians, you name it, they've got it. They own AstraZeneca and casually hang out with the Nasdaq Stock Exchange, Bezos, Musk, and Arno. These guys are the real deal with a $275 billion empire. They're like the puppet masters of a global game, pulling strings from Sweden, where they control the continent. With over a million people under their payroll, the Wallenberg family are basically running the show. In this video, we are going to take an in-depth look at this family. The Wallenberg family. This Swedish powerhouse is not just a family, it's practically a European empire. Their realm, known as the Wallenberg Sphere, is like a financial galaxy that employs a whopping 600,000 people and boasts mind-boggling annual sales of $154 billion. Now let's zoom into this empire's blueprint. There are 16 Wallenberg foundations, Foundation Asset Management AB, Investor AB, Patricia Industries, and Wallenberg Investments AB. These aren't just names, they're pillars holding up a financial fortress. Fast forward to 2022 and their conglomerate holdings holding company Investor AB isn't just holding, it's embracing around 330 companies. Now who's in their web of influence? Let's find out later in this video. In order to understand the remarkable rise of the Wallenberg family, we must delve into their early history. The roots of this influential Swedish dynasty can be traced back to the 17th century to a man named Per Hansen. Per married Kirsten Jakob's daughter Schut in 1692, and together they laid the foundation for what would become a legacy of success and power. Their son Jakob Per Person Wahlberg played a pivotal role in shaping the family's future. Jakob had children from two marriages, with the first using the name Wahlberg and the second using the name Wallenberg. This divergence in surnames would later become a symbol of the family's complexity and multifaceted nature. Fast forward to the mid-19th century and we encounter Andre Oskar Wallenberg, the great-grandson of Jakob Person Wahlberg. Born in 1816 in Sweden, Andre had a keen business sense from a young age. He recognized the potential for growth and prosperity in the banking industry and set out to establish his own financial institution. In 1856, Andre founded the Enskilda Banken, which would later become known as Skandinaviska Enskilda Banken. This marked the beginning of the Wallenberg family's ascent to wealth and power. Andre's innovative approach to banking and his commitment to providing exceptional service quickly earned him a reputation as a trusted and reliable financier. Under Andre's leadership, SEB flourished, expanding its operations and establishing a strong presence in the Swedish financial landscape. The bank's success allowed the Wallenberg family to diversify their investments and venture into other industries. They began acquiring shares in various companies, cementing their position as influential stakeholders in the Swedish business community. Andre's son, Knut Agathon Wallenberg, inherited his father's entrepreneurial spirit and took the family's business interests to new heights. Knut played a pivotal role in the industrialization of Sweden, using his financial expertise to support and invest in emerging industries. He recognized the potential of companies such such as Acia and Atlas Copco, and his strategic investments paid off handsomely. But Nut Agathon's ambitions extended beyond the world of finance. He was also deeply involved in Swedish politics and diplomacy, leveraging his connections and influence to shape the country's future. Knut's son, Marcus Wallenberg Sr., continued the family's legacy of business acumen and expansion. He took over the reins of SEB and further solidified the Wallenberg family's influence in the banking sector. Marcus Sr. also played a crucial role in the development of the Swedish Swedish economy, serving as an advisor to the government and advocating for policies that promoted growth and stability. In the early 20th century, a significant change occurred in Sweden with the introduction of legislation in 1916. This legislation aimed to limit the ability of banks to own shares in industrial companies for extended periods. The idea behind this regulation was likely to prevent banks from having excessive control and influence over various sectors of the economy. The Wallenberg family took strategic action to adapt to this new regulatory environment. In response to the legislation, they established a separate entity called Investor. This move allowed them to continue their involvement in industrial businesses, but through a different organizational structure. Investor was the investment branch of Stockholm's Enskilda Bank, the main bank of the Wallenberg family. They set up Investor to work around the rules that prohibited banks from owning industrial shares, allowing the Wallenbergs to play a significant role in Swedish business. This adaptation showcased the Wallenberg family's strategic thinking in the face of changing regulations. Instead of letting the legislation hinder their influence, they found a solution that allowed them to maintain a strong presence in both the banking and industrial sectors, solidifying their role as key players in the Swedish business world. However, the family's journey was not without its trials and tribulations. As World War II engulfed Europe, the Wallenberg family found themselves in a unique position to make a difference. Raoul Wallenberg stepped forward as a hero in the face of unimaginable horrors. In 1944, Raoul Wallenberg was appointed as a diplomat to Budapest. 
Budapest, Hungary. At the time, Hungary was under Nazi occupation and the Jewish population faced imminent danger. Raoul saw an opportunity to use his position to save lives. He embarked on a mission that would define his legacy. With the support of the Swedish government and the Wallenberg family's resources, Raoul devised a plan to issue protective passports, known as Schutz Passes, to Jewish individuals. These passports granted them Swedish citizenship and provided a lifeline in the face of persecution. Raoul's efforts went beyond the issuance of passports. He established safe houses known as Swedish houses, where Jews could find refuge and protection. These houses became sanctuaries amidst the chaos and brutality of the Nazi regime. In addition to the Swedish houses, Raoul employed creative tactics to save lives. He used his diplomatic protection to challenge Nazi officials and help Jewish people. Raoul's bravery saved thousands from being sent to concentration camps. A remarkable part of Raoul's efforts was how he skillfully dealt with the difficult political situation in Nazi-occupied Hungary. He built alliances with important people like the Hungarian government and other diplomats to keep those he was helping safe. Raoul's heroic actions did not go unnoticed. His efforts were recognized by the Jewish community and the international community at large. However, as the war drew to a close, Raoul's fate took a tragic turn. In January 1945, Raoul Wallenberg was arrested by Soviet forces and taken into custody. The circumstances surrounding his arrest remain shrouded in mystery and speculation. Despite numerous efforts to secure his release, Raoul disappeared into the Soviet prison system and his ultimate fate remains unknown. The Wallenberg family, devastated by Raoul's disappearance, continued to advocate for his release and search for answers. They tirelessly worked to keep his memory alive and ensure his heroic actions would never be forgotten. In 2015, the Wallenberg family requested the Swedish government to declare Raoul Wallenberg dead. The government asked for information about his location, but received no response. On October 26, 2016, Sweden officially declared Raoul Wallenberg dead, 71 years after he went missing. The declared date of his death is July 31, 1952, based on the last credible evidence of him being alive in July 1947. Raoul Wallenberg has been honored posthumously with numerous awards and memorials for his extraordinary bravery. While the Wallenberg family's heroic actions during World War II have earned them admiration and respect, their legacy has also been marred by controversies and rumors. Allegations of their connections to the Nazi regime have cast a shadow over their otherwise noble reputation. One of the main controversies surrounding the Wallenberg family is their alleged financial ties to the Nazi regime. Some have speculated that the family used their influence and resources to benefit financially from the war. These allegations suggest that they may have profited from the suffering of others. However, it is important to note that these allegations have never been substantiated. The Wallenberg family has denied any involvement in supporting or collaborating with the Nazis. They maintain that their actions during the war were solely focused on saving lives and opposing the atrocities committed by the Nazi regime. The controversy surrounding the Wallenberg family's alleged connections has been fueled by their secrecy and reluctance to discuss their wartime activities. The family's private nature has led to speculation and conspiracy theories, further clouding the truth. Another aspect of the controversy revolves around Raoul Wallenberg's arrest and disappearance. Some believe that his arrest by Soviet forces was not a coincidence, but rather a result of his alleged connections to the Nazis. This theory suggests that Raoul may have been involved in covert operations or espionage, leading to his capture by the Soviets. Again, it is important to emphasize that these allegations remain unproven. The true circumstances surrounding Raoul's arrest and subsequent disappearance remain a mystery. Despite the controversies, it is crucial to recognize the immense impact and positive contributions of the Wallenberg family. Their efforts in saving thousands of lives during the Holocaust cannot be overshadowed by unproven allegations. In recent years, the Wallenberg family has taken steps to address the controversies surrounding their history. They have opened up their archives to researchers and historians, allowing for a more comprehensive understanding of their actions during World War II. The Wallenberg family's influence extends beyond their banking and political involvement. They have played a pivotal role in shaping the landscape of Swedish industry, leaving an indelible mark on some of the country's most prominent companies. One of the key pillars of the Wallenberg family's business empire is their involvement in large Swedish industrial groups. Companies such as Ericsson, Electrolux, ABB, SAS Group, SKF, AIK and Atlas Copco have all benefited from the family's strategic investments and guidance. In fact, during the 1970s, the Wallenberg family businesses employed a staggering 40% of Sweden's industrial workforce and represented 40% of the total worth of the Stockholm stock market. Their influence and reach were unparalleled. The Wallenberg's approach to business was characterized by a long-term perspective and a commitment to sustainable growth. They understood the importance of nurturing and supporting the companies they invested
invested in, allowing them to thrive and contribute to the Swedish economy. This patient and strategic approach set them apart from other investors. They solidified their position as key players in the business world. One of the flagship companies within the Wallenberg sphere is Investor AB. With a market capitalization of around $60 billion, Investor AB is a powerhouse in the investment world. It serves as the primary investment vehicle for the Wallenberg family, allowing them to maintain control and influence over a diverse portfolio of companies. Through Investor AB, the Wallenbergs have shaped the direction of Swedish industry and driven economic growth, but their impact goes beyond financial investments. The Wallenberg family has also been actively involved in philanthropy, channeling their resources and influence toward initiatives that benefit society as a whole. The Knut and Alice Wallenberg Foundation in particular has played a significant role in supporting scientific research and education in Sweden. Their contributions have helped propel Swedish innovation and fostered a culture of excellence. What sets the Wallenberg family apart is not just their financial success, but also their commitment to maintaining a low-key public profile. They prioritize privacy over displays of wealth, choosing to let their actions speak for themselves. This approach has allowed them to focus on their work and make a lasting impact without seeking the spotlight. Throughout their illustrious history, the Wallenberg family has experienced various leadership changes and faced significant challenges. These moments of transition and adversity have tested their resilience and shaped the trajectory of their business empire. In the late 1960s, there was a leadership change in the Wallenberg family business due to a power struggle between Jacob Wallenberg and Marcus Wallenberg Jr. This conflict led to Jacob Wallenberg's resignation from the board of directors. The situation showed how family dynamics and power balance can be tricky within the Wallenberg family. Despite these challenges, the family demonstrated strength and unity in maintaining their influence. Another pivotal moment came in 1982 when Peter Wallenberg Sr. took over as the leader of the family's business interests. After Marcus Wallenberg passed away, Peter Wallenberg Sr. led Investor AB and Sweden's industry into a new era. Under his guidance, the family's business empire continued to thrive, and by 1990, they indirectly controlled one-third of the Swedish gross national product. The Wallenberg family's legacy continues to thrive in the hands of the fifth generation. Marcus Wallenberg, Jacob Wallenberg, and Peter Wallenberg Jr. have taken the reins, leading the family's business interests into the modern era. Their leadership and vision have propelled the Wallenberg empire to new heights, ensuring its continued success and influence. Marcus Wallenberg is a crucial player in the fifth generation of the Wallenberg family. His experience and skills have been vital in expanding and diversifying the family's business interests. Marcus's strategic thinking has strengthened the family's influence. Jacob Wallenberg, another prominent member of the fifth generation, has also made significant contributions to the family's business empire. His leadership and entrepreneurial spirit have been instrumental in expanding the family's reach and influence. Jacob's strategic investments and a keen eye for emerging opportunities have propelled the Wallenbergs into new industries and sectors. Peter Wallenberg Jr., the third member of the fifth generation, has brought his unique perspective and expertise to the family's business interests. His leadership has been characterized by a commitment to innovation and sustainability. Peter has championed initiatives that prioritize environmental and social responsibility, ensuring that the Wallenberg Empire remains at the forefront of responsible business practices. Together, Marcus, Jacob, and Peter Wallenberg Jr. have continued to build upon the family's legacy, expanding their influence and diversifying their portfolio. Their leadership has been marked by a forward-thinking approach, embracing new technologies and trends to drive growth and success. There are many families like this in Europe. Let's take a look at some of them. Other powerful families. The Wendell family, hailing from the picturesque Lorraine region of France, is a name synonymous with industrial and political power. Their rise to prominence began in the 19th century and continued well into the 20th century. The story of the Wendell family can be traced back to their patriarch, Jean Wendell, who resided in Bruges during the late 16th century. However, it was his son, Jean-Georges Wendell, who truly set the stage for the family's future success. Jean-Georges rose to the rank of colonel in a regiment of cravats under Emperor Ferdinand III. But it was Jean-Martin Wendell Wendell, the third son of Jean-Georges, who would shape the family's destiny. In the 18th century, Jean-Martin founded the family's industrial fortune by building the largest iron enterprise in the entire Lorraine region. His vision and entrepreneurial spirit laid the foundation for the Wendell family's future achievements. The Wendell family's operations continued to expand under the leadership of Charles de Wendell, the son of Jean-Martin. During the metallurgy slump of 1847 to 1850, Charles received crucial assistance from the Bank of France, enabling him to navigate through the 
challenging times. During this period, Charles and his brother-in-law, Theodore de Gargan, greatly expanded operations at Hyanga and Moyovra. Their efforts paid off, and in 1870, Vendel et C emerged as the largest iron company in all of France. However, their journey was not without its obstacles. Lorraine, the heartland of the Vendel family's operations, was annexed by Germany from 1870 to 1918. This disruption posed significant challenges to the family's operations and tested their resilience. After the ravages of the Second World War, the Wendell family faced yet another hurdle. In 1978, the French steel industry was nationalized without indemnity, resulting in the loss of their entire empire. But the Wendell family refused to be defeated. Ernest Antoine Cellier led the transformation of the family business into a successful investment company, Wendell Investissement. This strategic shift helped the Wendell family stay relevant in changing times. Now, now they own a significant part of Wendell SA, a thriving investment company that plays a significant role in French capitalism. Their influence in industry and politics has made a lasting impact on the nation's history. Let's take a look at another influential family. In Turin, Italy, a young Giovanni Agnelli had a dream that would revolutionize the automotive industry. Born in 1866, Giovanni was destined to become the founder of one of Europe's most influential and powerful families. Little did he know that his passion for machines and his entrepreneurial spirit would shape the course of history. Giovanni's journey began in the late 19th century, when he joined a small company called Fiat, which was just a fledgling automobile manufacturer at the time. Recognizing the immense potential of this emerging industry, Giovanni saw an opportunity to transform Fiat into a global powerhouse. With his sharp business acumen and determination, he quickly rose through the ranks, eventually becoming one of the original founders of the Fiat Motor Company. Under Giovanni's leadership, Fiat experienced unprecedented growth and success. He implemented innovative manufacturing manufacturing techniques, introduced new models, and expanded the company's reach beyond the borders of Italy. His vision and strategic decisions propelled Fiat to the forefront of the automotive industry, making it a household name around the world. But Giovanni's ambitions didn't stop there. He had a relentless drive to diversify and expand his family's empire. In addition to Fiat, he made strategic investments in other iconic automotive brands, including Ferrari, Lancia, Alfa Romeo, and Chrysler. These bold moves solidified the Agnelli family's dominance in in the automotive sector, creating a conglomerate that would shape the industry for generations to come. The Agnelli family's influence extended far beyond their business ventures. They were not just captains of industry, they were also passionate patrons of modern art and sports. Their love for culture and their commitment to supporting the arts made them true Renaissance figures in the contemporary history of Italy. The Agnelli's patronage of modern art and their involvement in the world of sports earned them the nickname the Kennedys of Italy. As the Agnelli family's wealth and influence grew, so did their involvement in the football world, they became majority investors in the prestigious Serie A football club, Juventus FC. The Agnellis' passion for football and their unwavering support for Juventus FC have made them beloved figures in the hearts of Italian football fans. Today, the Agnelli family's legacy continues to thrive under the leadership of Giovanni's descendants. Margarita Agnelli de Palen, the daughter of Giovanni's son Gianni Agnelli, has carried on the family's tradition of influence and philanthropy. Her son, John Elkan, now serves as the chairman and CEO of Exor and Stellantis, two major companies in the automotive industry. Their commitment to innovation, excellence and social responsibility ensures that the Agnelli family's impact will be felt for generations to come. Their story is one of ambition, success and the pursuit of excellence. In the heart of 16th century Frankfurt, another family emerged that would forever change the landscape of European finance and power. The Rothschilds, a wealthy Ashkenazi Jewish family, began their journey to prominence with Maya Amschel Rothschild a visionary entrepreneur who established a banking business in the 1760s. Maya Amschel Rothschild's banking business became well known for smart financial practices and a strong commitment to excellence. As his reputation and influence increased, powerful individuals and institutions took notice. Mayer used his business skills to seize opportunities, grow his network and build wealth. But Mayer's true genius lay in his ability to pass on his wealth and knowledge to his five sons, Amschel, Salomon, Nathan, Carl and James. Each son was sent to a different European city to establish their own banking businesses, effectively spreading the Rothschild influence across the continent. Amschel Meyer Rothschild set up the family's first international banking house in London. His sharp intellect and impeccable reputation allowed him to navigate British finance, earning the trust and respect of the British elite. The Rothschild's London branch quickly became a powerhouse in international high finance, financing major projects such as the construction of railway systems and the Suez Canal. Meanwhile, Salomon Meyer Rothschild established the family's presence in Vienna, Austria. With his strategic alliances and financial expertise, he played a pivotal role in financing the Austrian Empire's 
military campaigns and infrastructure projects. Salomon's influence extended beyond finance, as he was elevated to noble rank by Emperor Francis I of Austria, becoming the first Rothschild to receive such an honor. Nathan Meyer Rothschild, the third son, made his mark in the financial hub of Frankfurt. Known for his bold and daring investment strategies, Nathan became a key player in European finance. He famously capitalized on the Battle of Waterloo, using his extensive network of carrier pigeons to gain insider information and make a fortune in the stock market. This legendary feat solidified the Rothschilds' reputation as financial powerhouses. Karl Mayer Rothschild, the fourth son, established the family's presence in Naples, Italy. His banking business thrived, catering to the needs of the Neapolitan elite and playing a significant role in financing the Kingdom of Naples. Karl's connections and financial understanding allowed him to navigate the political landscape of Italy, further expanding the Rothschilds' influence. James Mayer Rothschild, the youngest son, set his sights on Paris. Despite facing anti-Semitic challenges in France, James persevered and built a successful banking business. His determination won the trust of influential figures, including Napoleon Bonaparte. James became a key financial advisor to the French government, solidifying the Rothschild status as a powerful European family. As the Rothschild brothers expanded their banks across Europe, they set up a unique communication system. Regular letters and their courier network helped them share information and make smart financial choices. With their immense wealth and influence, the Rothschilds became a significant force in the finance world. The Rothschilds' rise to power and prominence was not without challenges. They faced opposition and discrimination due to their Jewish heritage, but their determination and financial prowess allowed them to overcome these obstacles. Their success was further solidified when they were elevated to noble rank in the Holy Roman Empire and the United Kingdom, cementing their status as one of the most influential families in Europe. The Rothschilds' wealth reached its peak in the 19th century, with their banking empire spanning across major European cities. They were known for their fancy lifestyle, owning magnificent palaces and amassing vast art collections. However, the 20th century brought new challenges for the Rothschilds. The family's businesses in France were nationalized and their assets were seized during World War II. Despite these setbacks, the Rothschilds managed to rebuild and adapt to the changing times. Today, the family remains involved in various fields such as financial services, real estate, mining, energy, agriculture, winemaking and non-profits. The Rothschilds' history comes with controversy and unfounded conspiracy theories, often rooted in anti-Semitism. These false claims aim to discredit their accomplishments and promote harmful stereotypes. It's crucial to distinguish between reality and fiction and acknowledge the Rothschilds' meaningful contributions to European history and finance. While the Rothschilds have long been associated with wealth and power, another European family has risen to prominence with a fortune that rivals even the most affluent dynasties. The Quants, a German family, have amassed a significant percentage of their wealth through their ownership of BMW. However, behind their glamorous facade lies a dark and shocking history that has remained hidden for decades. The Quant family's journey to power and wealth began with Gunther Quant, a shrewd businessman who capitalized on the economic opportunities presented by World War I. Gunther amassed a considerable fortune through the production of uniforms, setting the stage for the family's rise to prominence. But it was during the interwar years that Gunther's true business acumen came to the fore. Using the economic crisis and inflation that plagued Germany, Gunther Quant acquired bankrupt industrial companies at a fraction of their value. His strategic acquisitions allowed him to expand his business empire and solidify his position as a major player in the German economy. Battery production became the cornerstone of the Quant family's wealth, as their batteries played a crucial role in military vehicles and weapons during World War II. However, it is the Quant's involvement with the Nazi regime that has cast a dark shadow over their legacy. The family's connection to the Nazi party and their support for Adolf Hitler's regime have been closely examined. Gunther Quant's strong ties to the Nazi party and his financial support for the regime have led to questions about the family's ethics and their involvement in the crimes of that era. The Quant's connection to the Nazi regime extended beyond financial support. The family owned a concentration camp where prisoners were subjected to inhumane conditions and forced labor. The Quant's involvement in the exploitation of forced laborers has been a stain on their reputation, and their actions during this dark period in history cannot be ignored. After the war, Gunther Quant managed to evade legal action and continued his business activities. His son, Herbert Quant, took over the family business and played a significant role in the reconstruction of Germany's industrial sector. Under Herbert's leadership, the family's wealth continued to grow and their ownership of BMW became a symbol of their power and influence. Despite the evidence that could have led to an indictment at the Nuremberg War Crimes Tribunal, no member of the Quant family has ever been held accountable for the crimes committed in their company-owned concentration camps. This lack 
of accountability has fueled public outrage and raised questions about the family's moral responsibility. In an attempt to distance themselves from their dark past, the Quants have made efforts to hide their history. Family members have refused interviews and prevented filming near their homes. However, the truth cannot be concealed forever, and the Quants' involvement with the Nazi regime remains a stain on their legacy. Today, the Quants are among the richest families in Germany, benefiting from their shareholdings in various companies. Their wealth and influence have allowed them to wield significant political power, making substantial donations to political parties. However, their rise to power and wealth is marred by their dark past and connection to one of history's most notorious regimes. In terms of European powerhouses, few families can rival the influence and success of the Rousing family. Hailing from Sweden, they have made a significant impact on business, earning a lot of money and influencing various industries with their creative projects. At the heart of their empire lies the Tetra Pak, packaging company, a name synonymous with convenience and efficiency. But the story of the Rousing family's rise to prominence begins with the visionary Ruben Rousing. Born in 1895 in Raus, Helsingborg, Ruben's journey towards entrepreneurial greatness was marked by determination and a keen eye for opportunity. Ruben's educational pursuits took him to the prestigious Stockholm School of Economics and Business Administration, where he honed his business acumen. Seeking further knowledge, he ventured across the Atlantic to Columbia University in the United States, immersing himself in commerce and industry. Armed with newfound knowledge and a burning desire to make his mark, Ruben Rousing returned to Sweden and embarked on a partnership with Ackerland and Amp Rousing, a packaging company in 1921. Little did he know that this partnership would lay the foundation for a business empire that would span generations. In 1933, Ruben Rousing made a bold move, buying out the other partner's shares and assuming full control of the company. This pivotal moment marked the beginning of a new era for the Rousing family. But it was in the early 1940s that Ruben Rousing's genius really shone through. Faced with the challenge of packaging liquid products efficiently, he revolutionized the industry with the introduction of a groundbreaking packaging method. This innovation, known as Tetra Pak, would forever change the way liquid products were packaged and consumed. The success of Tetra Pak was unparalleled, and the Rousing family's fortune grew exponentially. Ruben Rousing's sons, Hans and Gad Rousing, inherited the company and continued to expand its reach, solidifying their family's position as industry leaders. However, a momentous event in 1996 would forever alter the trajectory of the Rousing family's wealth and influence. Hans Rousing, recognizing Tetra Pak's immense potential, made a monumental decision. He sold his half of the Tetra Laval Group, the parent company of Tetra Pak, to his brother Gad Rousing for a staggering $7 billion. This transaction not only consolidated Gad's control over the family business, but also catapulted the Rousing family into the upper echelons of global wealth. Today, the Rousing family's influence extends far beyond their business ventures. Notable members of the family include Ruben Rousing, Gad Rousing, Birgit Rousing, Kirsten Rousing, Finn Rousing, Hans Rousing, Lisbeth Rousing, Sigrid Rousing, and Hans Christian Rousing. Rousing family has made a positive impact on many lives through their charitable efforts and contributions to arts, sciences, and education in Sweden. On the other hand, the Przenowski family, with roots in the Sierads region of Poland, has a long and notable history dating back to the early 17th century. Establishing a court in Chelm and Red Ruthenia, the Przenowski family quickly gained recognition for their progressive stance on religious freedom. Their unwavering support for this cause garnered the admiration and support of the Jewish community in Kalis, further solidifying their influence and power. The Przenowski family's impact on Galicia and Lodomeria, two historical regions in Poland, cannot be overstated. They played a pivotal role in shaping the political landscape of the region. Beyond their involvement in politics, the Przenowski family's influence extended to finance and banking. They own notable companies such as Second Credit Union in Warsaw, Bank Polski, and Two Credit Union in Warsaw, Poland's largest and second largest banks. Notable members of the Przenowski family include Edward Przenowski, an esteemed engineer and architect. Stefan Przenowski, another prominent figure in the family, served as a minister, further solidifying the Przenowski family's influence in the political sphere. The Przenowski family's contributions to Polish society have not gone unnoticed. Their involvement in finance, banking and various industries has played a significant role in the development of the Polish economy. Their commitment to promoting religious freedom and their support from the Jewish community in Kalis has left a lasting impact on the cultural fabric of Poland. If you enjoyed this video, click on the card showing on your screen right now for more videos.